As we look at the world around us, it's not hard to see that evil is increasing in the world. As we seek to live our lives faithful to the Lord and still survive these last turbulent days, it can be hard and even discouraging at times. This week on the Hope in Christ podcast, we'll engage in a three-part study that will help us see how we can have power and strength to overcome this world and to teach our children to do the same. Coming up in this scripture highlight is part one. Hi everyone, this is Ben Peterson, and welcome to the Hope in Christ podcast. Following the Come Follow Me curriculum of The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, we search the scriptures and words of God's prophets for relevant and powerful lessons that will increase our connection with God and our hope and faith in Christ. I'm so glad you're listening and hope you enjoy this week's highlights. Hi, and welcome back to another week of Scripture Highlights from the Hope in Christ podcast. I'm glad that you're listening to this podcast, and I really hope that you enjoyed your Scripture study last week. To kick us off this week, we're in the book of Nahum. Nahum was a prophet who lived and prophesied in the southern kingdom of Judah surrounding Jerusalem, and he did so during the lifetime of the Book of Mormon prophet Lehi, or following the Old Testament prophet Isaiah. And though Nahum did live during the time period of Lehi, Nahum would have been prophesying in Judah a couple of decades before the Book of Mormon record began. Nahum's prophecies are directed specifically at the city of Nineveh. Remember, this is the ancient capital of Assyria, the very last capital of Assyria before Assyria would be destroyed. Now, you might recognize the name Nineveh from the story of Jonah from last week. You might recall that the prophet Jonah was commanded to teach repentance to the people of Nineveh, and they did repent. But now here we are, about a hundred years later, and they have become extremely wicked again. So wicked, in fact, that the Lord has decided it is time for Assyria to be destroyed. As you read and study the book of Nahum this week, you might look at the chapter headings. You'll notice that Nahum's prophecies don't apply only to Assyria, but they also foreshadow the destruction of the wicked at the time of the second coming of Jesus Christ. In these prophecies, both of their day and of ours, violent justice will be poured out on all who live in complete disregard of God and His holy commandments. And these prophecies get pretty graphic. This describes the destruction of the lawless, and as you look around our society today, you can see how the wicked are preparing themselves for that destruction. The more lawless we become, the more we try to legalize everything, including every kind of sin, the more the wicked set themselves up to be destroyed. You cannot have blatant and complete disregard of God and His commandments and expect to receive His protection from your enemies. I found it very interesting to study in the scriptures the destruction of wickedness in any dispensation. The Lord has an interesting way of giving to us exactly what we want and exactly what we're willing to give others. For example, in chapter 3 of Nahum, verse number 8, The Lord asks the people of Nineveh or Assyria, Are you better than populous? Now, if you look in your footnote, you'll notice that the word populous in Hebrew is no Amun, which has been proven to be the city of Thebes in Egypt. So the Lord asks them in verse 8, Do you think you're better than Egypt? Now, only probably a few decades before this prophecy is being delivered, Assyria conquered Egypt and they destroyed them. The Lord is asking them, do you think you're better than Egypt? You're going to get now exactly what you gave Egypt. As we live in a world that is wicked and becoming increasingly more wicked, and knowing what we know about the last days and the destruction of the wicked, we don't need to be afraid. Just last month in the October 2022 General Conference, Elder Neil L. Anderson said, The Lord explained that in this final time prior to His return, the wheat, whom He describes as the children of the kingdom, would grow side by side with the tares, or those who do not love God and who do not keep His commandments. They would both grow together side by side. This will be our world until the Savior returns, 
with much that is good and much that is evil on every side. Elder Anderson continued, We realize that as evil increases in the world, our spiritual survival and the spiritual survival of those we love will require that we more fully nurture, fortify, and strengthen the roots of our faith in Jesus Christ. The Apostle Paul counseled us to be rooted, grounded, and settled in our love for the Savior and our determination to follow Him. Today and the days ahead require more focused and concentrated effort, guarding against diversions and carelessness. But even with the increasing worldly influences around us, we need not fear. The Lord will never desert His covenant people. Close quote. If you read in the book of Nahum, chapter 1, verse 7, the Lord does interject this message of destruction to the wicked with a message of hope and reassurance to the righteous. Verse 7 states that the Lord is good. He's a stronghold in the day of trouble, and he knoweth them that trust in him. In Nahum, chapter 1, verse 15, the Lord warned them to keep their feasts and their vows. We could compare that today to keep the ordinances of the gospel and our covenants. And it is not a coincidence that his prophets today are telling us to do the same thing. Elder Anderson continued in his talk, The Lord will never desert his covenant people. There is a compensatory power of spiritual gifts and divine direction for the righteous. This added blessing of spiritual power, however, does not settle upon us just because we're part of this generation. It comes as we strengthen our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and keep His commandments, as we come to know Him and love Him. This is life eternal, Jesus prayed, that they might know Thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom Thou hast sent. He then said, As we better know and love the Savior, we desire even more to promise Him our allegiance and trust. We make covenants with Him. In Nahum chapter 2 verse 1, it tells us to fortify our power. Elder Anderson in that same talk reminded us, Making and keeping covenants allows the love of the Savior to sink more deeply into our heart. In this month's Liahona, President Russell M. Nelson said, Our covenants will lead us closer and closer to Him. God will not abandon His relationship with those who have forged such a bond with Him. And as President Nelson said so beautifully this morning, Elder Anderson continued, With the dedication of each new temple, additional godly power comes into the world to strengthen us and counteracts the intensifying efforts of the adversary. Elder Anderson then continued, Can we see why the Lord would direct His prophet to bring the holy temples closer to us and allow us to be in His house more often? As we enter the temple, we are freed for a time from the worldly influences crowding against us as we learn of our purpose in life and the eternal gifts offered us through our Savior Jesus Christ. Close quote. As we get closer and closer to the day of our Savior's final return to the earth, we realize that we're waging a spiritual battle every day. As we ponder about the Lord's reassurance to remember the righteous and endow them with power to withstand their enemies in the last days, I love to think about the words from the hymn, Let Us All Press On. It states, Let us all press on in the work of the Lord that when life is o'er, we may gain a reward. In the fight for right, let us wield a sword, the mighty sword of truth. We will not retreat, though our numbers may be few, when compared with the opposite host in view, but an unseen power will aid me and you in the glorious cause of truth. If we do what's right, we have no need to fear, for the Lord our Helper will ever be near. In the days of trial, His saints He will cheer and prosper the cause of truth. Fear not, though the enemy deride. Courage, for the Lord is on our side. We will not heed what the wicked may say, but the Lord alone we will obey. 
May the Lord bless you this week as you fight your battles with Him at your side, with power through your covenant relationship with His Son, Jesus Christ. May He bless you in your scripture study to engage in deep spiritual learning that will help change your heart and transform your life to look even more like His. Our next episode will be part two of this study. Please don't miss it. We'll be talking about the new For the Strength of Youth Guide and how the Lord will help us win this battle in the last days. Thanks again for listening and have an excellent day.